Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BSNZ, back with another Power Query tutorial. In today's video, we are going to join two tables based on a date range. Well, the data set, very simple, we got list of trades. So we got trade transactions, buying and selling specific stocks at specific days. Well, on the other side, I got a little broker table there, and I got a broker that was active for specific days between the start and the end date. What I want to do is... I want to join this broker table to this trade table based on these trade dates and joining it between these start and end dates over there. What I'll sit with at the end is a beautiful table like this where I can see who the broker was at that specific point in time. So we are going to join based on a date. Well, let me show you how to do it. All right, so let's get this data into Power Query. So we select the broker table, go to data and say from table or range. That opens Power Query. Yes, there we go. So you can see out of the broker tab, I'm going to say home, close and load, close and load two, because I just want to load a connection. I'm going to say connection only. Yes, so now we see you have the broker table. But now let's do the same for the trades table. Click on it, go to data, say from table or range, and then it brings it into Power Query. So now you can see if we have two tables, broker table and the trade table. Both of them are there. All right, I want you to note one thing on the broker table over there. You know, you've got your start date, your end date. Um, Power Query automatically added a step called change type. And you can see it formatted this as date time. I don't like the date time. So what you can do is, I just want to make a date. You can click on change type. And over there it says type date time. You can say date and you can say date. And you can see what it's going to do is it's going to convert that to date. Same with the trade table. You can see the change type change the trade date into date time and you can just select it and say no not date time let's just make it date there we go so now you have a date column all right so now the second thing that we want to do is i want to join this table to that table we're going to add a new column here and we're going to add the broker table as a table okay so how do we do that we say add column i'm going to use the ui for this say custom column brings this and we call this the broker and in there i simply say Mm, I don't want any of these columns. What I want is I want the broker table. So I'm just going to say broker table, which is a reference to the other query. And I'm going to say, OK, see what happens here. It adds a new column called broker in this step. But if I click on it, it has a little table reference there. Every single row has a reference to the broker table. Well, isn't that great? So now our next step would be to take this inner table. You can see this is you can see this is the outer table and this is the inner table. I want to now select rows from this inner table that matches the criteria of this trade date between um, start and end dates from this main table. So I'm going to do an outer and inner table reference to select the correct broker at that time. We're going to go to this add custom column M query over here. And in here, I'm simply going to use the function table select rows. Yes. And what I'm going to say is great. So from the broker time, I'm going to say each. I want to basically see where the start date See, that's from that inner table, right? Is smaller or equal to the trade date from the outer table. And I'm just going to close that bracket out. So you can see, if I click here, ah, oh, it can't find the trade date. It has no concept. You can see like we're being too vague here. I'm not specifically telling it what is the inner and what is the outer query. So you can't really find the trade date. The context is lost. So we need to do some magic you around the eaches and kind of like declare the inner and the outer and we're going to do this with the each statements all right so this very first each and um, this is only sugar syntax i'm just going to wrap it in some brackets and i'm going to say the outer table we're going to call that t for trades so that is the outer table and you need to add a rocket ash right brilliant and now this inner each over there would be for each would be a, a reference within the inner table. So I'm just going to do the same there, add brackets around it and call that the B for broker table and add the rocket hash. Right. So there we go. OK, so now the each is basically replaced with a named with a named each. You can see that's the outer table and this is the inner table reference. So what I'm going to say is this start date is actually from the B table, so you can see that inner reference B, and this trade is from 
the T table, the outside reference over there. I'm going to say, OK. And now you can see it's actually quite happy. Oh, see, we're narrowing down our selections. So it actually works. So this is how you refer to your inner and your outer table queries when doing this kind of thing, where you have an inner table that needs to connect to an outer table. You must name it and be explicit with your naming. So let's just quickly complete the statement because I also want to see where it's less than the end date. So I'm going to say there and B end date is greater or equal to the T grade date. And now I'm going to press enter. Now we should return only one row. There we go. So we actually found our brokers. Isn't that cool? So we did it successfully. That's basically us. Done. Okay. So now what we can do is we can just say expand, bring back the broker. Yeah, and you can see it's bringing it back as a alphanumeric. But if we look at our original data set, it's actually alphabetic. Okay, so how can we get around that? I'm just going to delete this last step. I don't want to add another step to do that. I can simply add it to the end of this add custom column statement over there. And before we close that statement out, I'm just going to say, yeah, type the table. Yeah, the broker field in there is simply going to be text type of type text. Then we can close it out. Now you can see if we expand that, bring the broker back. There we go. It's basically alphabetical. Very cool. Very cool. We basically done here. And now all I need to do is I need to say close and load and it's going to bring back the data beautifully in Power Query. Isn't that incredible? I hope this blew your mind and opened your imagination to all the things that you can do in Power Query. Until we meet next time, BA Sensei signing out.